you know, inspiring for the grand opening of this new series well, of great Camp Zero, I mean, Camp Zero, blah, blah, blah. Okay, <laughs> okay so welcome. Um, I call this We, we Won the War, maybe. Um, but um, as we're not sure if we won the war or not, uh, which I will, of course, explain which war I'm talking about in a minute. Um, however, being not sure about it, uh, it's about managing transition. It's about uh, overcoming the situation. So where are we with the internet and with the society? We have um, the internet and the electronic communication networks in very different layers, but in most layers of society now, be it economic processes, social interactions, uh, be it our personal communication, uh, be it a political uh, processing of opinions, be it, and that's maybe most important, media in the sense of, of these things that create reality of the minds in the minds of the people. So formerly that was like <clears throat> newspapers, that was television, that was central instances which required very little for a national government to control it, uh, which changed now. So um, we have more and more a situation where nation states and their way of governance, of uh, creating or controlling reality, is totally incompatible to the environment, to the processes uh, in many, many areas. So um, the other day I found myself in a country I can't really disclose here, and I was meeting some young, bright guys um, who I was there to set up some technical installations, and they told me, well, just yesterday they had been invited to the prime minister's office, and they were invited there to talk about and to help him to solve this Twitter problem. I asked them, so what the fuck is the Twitter problem? Well, you know, there's this new thing called Twitter. He doesn't really understand it. He's a little bit older man. And it, there's this new Twitter thing, and it shows that people are not satisfied with the government, and they organize over this. They go in the street. They burn down police stations and all these things, and he needs us to solve it. And I asked him, so, but, you know, if there's a new media called Twitter and based on the Internet, and it shows that people are not satisfied, with the government, maybe it has nothing to do with the media. Maybe it's just, you know, they said, yeah, you're right, but that's not what he wanted to hear. So, and I asked them, so what, what did he want to hear? And then they explained me, well, okay, we took this marketing tool uh, based for Twitter. It, it helps you identify trends, uh, and like you can kidnap hashtags with a bot network, and you can drive uh, your hashtags that people use two specific websites. So meaning you can drive the attention from one situation to another situation. Um, but he asked them if it wouldn't be possible to kill it. So to like stop it. Um, I said, but well, you know, if people, if the reality of the citizens are created these days through the internet, through stuff like Twitter, and his reality is still that thing on the street out there, and newspapers and television, and then if he like closes down, like shuts off, switches off an internet service, then he really escalates the situation. People will be on the street and so on. But still, the trouble was these young people, they were in a situation where they somehow had to serve the superiors and they couldn't talk the truth. So after like an hour of discussion, they asked me what from my point of view, would be the best solution to the problem. And I told them, maybe shoot the guy. Uh, because if you don't shoot him, you will have 30 years of non-understanding based on their hierarchy. This is not a tale, okay? This is, uh, unfortunately, something I really ex experienced. Um, <coughs> and, I mean, they were laughing. Um, like, two of the guys were... <laughs> now, actually... <laughs> The point is that, that it was like, the setup was like this. There was these two young people who couldn't stop laughing anymore. Then there's the moderate guy, he said, nah, you know, <laughs> that's so easy. Then there was the minder, you know what that is. That's the guy from the government who took care of m m me being in that country. And he said, yeah, unfortunately, that solution is not available right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so um, I'm not a governmental consultant, don't get me wrong. but. 
what I'm trying to tell you is we really have a generation gap, which is we really have a, 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 like a lack of understanding of some people how reality, how the new media, how this impacts citizens and how the world like runs for people like us and for our generation. <clears throat> and there is roughly, to simplify a little bit, there's two cornerstones what the internet changes. The one is we have the freedom of information, which brings like this different type of media, which brings everybody can put something into the internet, which also brings like WikiLeaks uh, approach. Uh, and we have the total surveillance of all communications, which is the world of NSA and so on. And that, in a way, is totally attached together because if you go to like the, I'm running this backplanet.info uh, wiki, so I'm studying the surveillance industry, and if you go to these conference websites where in the Middle East these uh, European companies present their surveillance technology to these Middle East guys, and they have no democratic attitude, whatever. They're, they're not looking for democratic thingies. They are looking for the cure, for the medicine, for their environment, because from their point of view, the society is sick. It's infected by this internet thingy, you know? They, they really see it as an illness, and they are looking for the doctor, and the doctor comes and says, oh yeah, we have something, we have these surveillance tools. So, and now, I mean, this sounds maybe a bit absurd, but study the website is really like that from my point of view. Now, game theory applies. So we will have, we will not get rid of, of each of these two borders. So we will have the freedom of information war, we could call it, and we have the surveillance war, if you want it. So now, make your guess. Um, what's going to win? How, uh, how is this going to end up? Because we have seen, or we are already seeing, they can supply as much surveillance as they want. They will not stop the freedom of information. They will just create another Snowden, and that's their biggest fear. And that's why we have won the war. Because Right now, their biggest fear is another Snowden, maybe a Snowden from the CIA, and they can't stop it. Yes, they can surveil us more and more and more. But, um, and there is, of course, a, a big time frame. Things need until they come in the minds of the normal people and like transported by stupid old media prisons, you know, and redacting it and moderating it and so on. But still, um, it's going through. So, there is, however, a something like, so I totally apologize. Normally, this should have been a circle, okay? So imagine a circle, if you like. <laughs> um, but I didn't have any graphics tool with me. So <laughs> um, there's something like a circle of interferences, of, of things that, uh, reactions to other reactions and so on. So we have these control freaks because once you are in a government, you are in, in, in administrative function in the government, you want to keep control of the processes. That's the nature of the whole thing. So it's very, in a way, it's very natural, even if it's totally perverse, for these guys to look for the violence tools and to you know, put cameras everywhere and to try to ear tag us and put us into like boxes and so on. Um, that's the nature of governments. It has always been. So, and they use now IT as they use, you know, as there's a, a Jewish um, guy studying human reactions, and he always, uh, there's a pattern like when a small kid takes a hammer in his hands, the whole world looks like nails, okay? And that's for these guys and governments the same situation. You take a computer, you are a government, well, hey, this is about control. So that's how it works. Uh, so this brings, oh, shit. This brings us not so surveillance, but surveillance, that's a typo. Um, this brings suppression, this brings whistleblowers, which is our new pattern. Whistleblowers raise the consciousness, so they make everybody better aware of what's going on. Then there is counterinsurgency. Of course, there will be backslash, okay? They will send us spies. They will send us soldiers if we don't uh, act uh, in a smart way. There will be resistance. There will be more whistleblowers. <coughs> there will be attention and distraction management. Um, so all these things, we could call it entertainment, but 
Well, that's where we are in right now already. But the bottom line, or in a nutshell, is the emperor wears no clothes. I mean, that's so obvious. These guys are totally blind and are totally failing to like, have the control they have been used to have. So, but if we have the situation, if we would just, as a thesis, agree to this and say, okay, for the moment it looks like governments have a problem with this new internet situation, um, they wear no clothes, so it's a bit ridiculous that they try to, you know, forbid the internet and do all these kind of things, or switch it off. Um, <clears throat> the question is, how do we manage that? How do we, um, because an emperor who's wearing no clothes, if we laugh about them too loud, they might get aggressive. They still have the weapons, they still have the military, they still have the monopoly of violence. So it's not a situation that we can say, hey, we've won, and it's so easy, and have a nice day. Um, it's a transition period. And um, <clears throat> in this period, we have to be very aware of some things. First of all, of the I would call it automatic appliances, so of things that happen like almost uh, like a machine. We have Machiavelli figures like this owner of Fox IT. That guy uh, just exposed some slides of him he presented to the uh, Europol conference <coughs> and it's like, really a person like going to the government, may I help you to suppress your citizens a bit more effective? cannot be your, you know, guard to better survive them and so on. It's, it's really the way he's acting. Um, then we have um, another uh, type of environment where people are like in a Stockholm Syndrome, meaning they are locked into, but the government is good, isn't it? I mean, how can we, you know, think about overthrowing those who protect us, right? And there's these terrorists and, you know, okay, you, you, I guess you get the point and the picture. Then we got these control freaks, you get more aggressive if they think, if they think they lose control. So maybe it's better for us to let them think they are still under control, just to have them calm down. Um, and then there is each of us, and, and I mean, I'm currently working between um, media organizations managing the Snowden material, a journalist and others involved in WikiLeaks figures uh, managing the situation. And I can very, more, uh, very sure tell you that if you personally um, will be the guy who met the whistleblower who gave you the hard disk from the CIA operation material, uh, it's not only that your life just changes a little bit, it's also that we will learn new and you will learn about yourself new how far you can go. What's your fears? What's your limitations? What's your options? Whom do you trust? Um, there is these situations right now and I'm, I, I'm dealing there with people who most of them I know longer than five years and still I say, wow, um, this is a bit of a different gravity. And this is not, um, you cannot accuse people who are afraid, if they are their friends or not their friends, you cannot accuse someone of being afraid for acting maybe too shy or to acting not fast enough or to, it's very difficult um, just to have it said. So next to all the theory we could set up now about the revolution and how we will plan and so on, it, um, we're dealing with human beings. <coughs> so. Coming back to the question, what the hell do we do with the emperor running around here with no clothes? Um, <clears throat> there is, um, yeah, <laughs> there is a, <laughs> there is some kind of a cost of representative figures, uh, and that's the question: Are the institutions they represent are they recyclable? Um, are they of any use? I had this discussion with a Dutch friend of mine. I told them, like, um, we, we talked about first the German Minister of Interior, who's a total incompetent asshole, and I, I told them, well, you know, <laughs> of course I could think now, best thing is maybe to put the guy to the wall and shoot him. On the other hand side, I don't know him personally. Maybe 
he is a good gardener or maybe he has some excellent mechanical capabilities I'm just not aware of because by accident that guy became Minister of Interior. So, um, and then we came talking about the um, some of the Dutch situation and we came, uh, we came to our attention that the Dutch, they still have a royal family. And I asked him, so, so what's your thoughts on them? And he said, well, the only useful thing you could make out of them is dog food. Is <laughs> I, I kind of like that picture, you know, because dogs are as helpful figures and they need some food and if you can't use people at all. Well, um, but, but honestly, I mean, the, our role is to turn totally unuseful institutions we call governments <coughs> these days into something that makes sense for our future and the future of our kids or whatever. So there is, we need either, for the emperor without doubt, either we need a, a way out for him where he can still think he wore clothes but he just entered the wrong room and you know, and there's the exit, or we need a quick disposal. Um, which means you need to have something in place that replaces him and so on. Which is um, not impossible depending on the situation but it requires preparation and, and these things then have to be done like a, like a theater play. So don't underestimate intelligence organizations because part of what they do in the psychological operation, the human operations, is they play through situations the whole day. They simulate to be you in the room and three, two guys, friends of yours in the room are playing like this way and that way and see how you react and how far you go and how to bring you to do a specific thing. So this is in, in German, it's called operative Spiele. Um, and this is important to realize, and we have to do the same if we're dealing with these situations. We have to play it through. So why not? It was great fun. Um, <clears throat> so turning institutionalized matters into something useful as an entity for a post-governmental area that, that would be maybe one possible way <coughs> to call it. Um, so what do we need? We need means of communications. Obviously, that's our strengths. I mean, so internet thingies and so on. Uh, we need means of publication that goes hand in hand to it, but we shouldn't underestimate there's still a part of the population who maybe need things in the newspapers or who maybe need it reported on television, otherwise it doesn't take place. So, um, as a matter of fact. We need um, escape routes. Um, uh, I mean, you are all aware that um, the reason Edward Snowden is in Moscow is because someone helped him to get there, right? And someone who personally took great risk, and it's not Assange, and it's not Glenn Greenwald, it's Sarah Harrison. It's, like a woman who nobody actually knows very much. Um, however, um, as I know her and I know the uh, situation of Julian also, and you might like or not like Julian Assange, however, um, <coughs> he managed to at least um, uh, not be in prison, uh, so still be able to talk things and to, for example, uh, organize that Snowden gets from Hong Kong to Moscow. Um, which I consider as a, as a very important stunt, seeing that he is guarded by 12 policemen uh, standing in front of the embassy and a totally madness British situation. Um, but if we coming to the CIA whistleblower, this will be escalated already a few levels. And if we continue to throw down the walls of governments um, by providing transparency on their inner actings, um, we will actually need uh, help of governments. So we have to identify, we have to make friends. We have to look who is already useful. Um, so we have our virtual homeland, we have the internet, but we also need like embassies for that, okay? We need protected environments, um, we need, uh, yeah. A lot of things. So strategy-wise, um, that might be uh, done by playing interest uh, of, for example, governments against each other. 
the one or the other of you might have uh, saw in the last weeks RT.com, like the Russia television. Of course, that's the Russian foreign propaganda. However, they do a very good role in exposing the um, Western world's uh, limitation of democracy by uh, having totally uh, surveillance and having intelligence players who uh, totally play against democratic rules. So uh, it's, it's great fun. And I think they have also great fun producing it. And now you might say, but come on, if you look at Russia, you know, it is not exactly the non surveillance state. Uh, that might be true, but it's not that this foreign propaganda doesn't bring them, maybe, as an institution to the point where they can hardly have the same bad policies they are criticizing. So it's wonderful to drive them in a way that they criticize this the whole day, because once they are out there saying that, you just have to ask, oh, by the way, what about your home? They, they just can't, okay? There's a point of no return. There's mechanisms of bewaring of face and so on. So that's an interesting uh, playground, um, just to have it set. RT will be happy to have each of you in front of camera explaining things. Uh, right now, they are very supportive things, so just as an example. Um, and always there's one, I mean, when I was in the Icon board uh, like 10 years ago, I was dealing with this Vincer figure who some might like and some might not like. However, he has a great experience with dealing with governments. He always, when we were in a deadlock, when governments wanted control over the internet and I can, didn't want it, that he always said, well, thank God governments never come in singular. They're always in plural. Governments always consist of different groups inside because governments are so big. And there's always individuals in governments who have other ideas than the governments as such have. So you can play it out if you just forget the idea that there's the bad government or the government at all. Because there's always like movements inside of these entities, however strong and one opinion they might look like to the outside. Um, so. <clears throat> Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I love the, the slogan of the European Union is united in diversity. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, um, and one, one strategy that um, might be helpful or might be a good one is to become helpful. Uh, to become helpful is, of course, uh, it is a bit of Machiavellistic thinking inside here. Uh, may I help you to stabilize your governmental affairs as you obviously have trouble you know, with these internet movements. But the cure we might bring is not the surveillance thingy. We might have totally alternative other ideas. So um, like many years ago, in, in the 90s, I was invited by a strange figure who turned out to be uh, maybe a nice man. His name is Robert Steele. He is a former CIA guy, um, whatever that means. Um, he is running conferences called on open source intelligence, um, saying that, you know, never send a spy where a schoolboy can do it, because what he told me in a nutshell was that the problem of the American intelligence community is they, uh, of course, have had already that time, the goal to intercept each and everybody on the whole planet. But it doesn't mean they, on the same uh, track, have ever developed means to understand other cultures. And if you don't other cultures, there's not a lot of value in collecting all the communication. Um, so, um, but his strange idea why he invited hackers to his conferences was to say hackers are a national resource. And in a way, um, that is very true, because if you look at what this tiny little admin from the first bit of CIA, then a bit of NSA, then like a private contractor, just this tiny little guy who was just a SITMIN administrator, what he just did to the United States, it gives you maybe an idea of your own role. Because, hey, you're only maybe a system administrator, but what does it mean in an environment that is totally based on the electronic infrastructure and where the meanings of laws, procedures, authorities, hierarchies are all melt down if you just pseudo them? So 
so to say. Um, so um, we shouldn't underestimate uh, the role this generation and the people with a technical understanding have in the institutions and can have um, for the whole game. So move on from where you are. Um, that was it. Thank you. <clears throat> Maybe there's questions or more procedural ideas or the requirement to get drunk or... Um, you were mentioning Robert Steele. Mm -hmm. Is that the guy who was recently covered by Al Jazeera who was running the black prison things and all the, the black squads in Afghanistan and Iraq? Actually, I'm not totally sure, but what, what I have learned in the meantime, I mean, I met that guy, he was uh, opening like the, Hope Conf the first Hope Conference, Hacker Conference of 2600 in 1990-something. He was and, also an uh, Iran-Contra involved in that whole thing. Mm. He's an old guy, an old CIA guy. Mm. I think that, he's definitely no, but, 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 he's not running the, all the black things in Iraq and Afghanistan. No, 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 that's another one. No. No, no, but, but w because what I have learned is that Steele recently, like some months ago, he um, actually made a statement together with, um, um, uh, excuse me, what's the guy name? Uh, Ellsberg, with Daniel Ellsberg and others so about the, the usage or the, the value whistleblowers bring to the American society. So a bit from a patriotic point of view. But it was kind of funny because I always had discussed with some other guys that when I'm really in a strange mood, then I just write the steel guy an email saying, oh, by the way, thank you so much for your inspiration. Without your ideas, we have, would have never created WikiLeaks to just drop him out of the governmental affairs. But actually, when I more or less did that the other day, I found out he was already fired and is broke, and he's already smeared all the way. So, no, I mean, that's, that happens when, when, but I mean, he, he has maybe compensated it with good karma, so it's okay. For some people, it's totally fine to drop out of governmental things and to be unemployed because they feel free and they feel better than being involved in something that is doing injustice and, you know, so no regrets here. Yeah. yeah. Actually, uh, indeed, and, and sometimes if you talk with people and you maybe need to give them the final push to quit their job and to bring you the hard disk with the material and to publish it on the internet, um, hey, that was a joke. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Just do it, yeah. No questions? Or maybe more strategic uh, questions on how we proceed from there. So, um, like the communication that we are experiencing now with all these leaks from Snowden, mm -hmm. like the, the interpretation, the reinterpretation by the journalists who have no access to the yeah. experts who are giving it access yeah, yeah. Well, to the yeah, we, we first, talk. first source journalists or whatever. Yeah. Um, this is, this is they don't understand the thing and the, the whole communication gets out of hand and it's a mass food machine and panic thing and yeah. we feel powerless and stuff like that. Mm. So like the, the effect of these 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 leaks and they like harming the psyche or is this good? Well that's I mean we let me Yeah, let me try to answer that. I mean, we've we talked about it on lunch, obviously, already a little bit. Um, so the, I mean, I know people in this game who say it was totally wrong to do it slowly over, you know, first the Guardian only, then others, and so on. It, it should have come as a massive leak, because then their amount of time to spin doctorate, to counter and it, to, you know, throw their propaganda on, um, we are limited. Um, obviously, and I have, um, it's very funny because you, you learn from all the journalists uh, commenting at also the, the, uh, the culture of the country. So, 
I, I have an Italian journalist uh, who's, who's actually not involved, and uh, she's like pushing a... <laughs> um, and others are more careful because they are not only American citizens, they got briefed from lawyers what it means if they hand over material because they would be then the same liable than the source, so Snowden himself. And then these guys have uh, maybe the, the strange and naive idea to ever return to the United States because they have a house there or a family or whatever. So this is, um, and then of course we have the process of journalists not understanding it, just understanding things where it's mentioned Facebook and Google, so Prism was obviously the reason why it got the early, and if it comes to crypto, they don't understand it at all. They simplify it, the editorial team still simplifies it a second time because there's still terms in it that the editorial team thinks should be brought out because it can't be that in a normal newspaper technical terms are used, and then it ends up with NSA breaks crypto, great which is not true, which is, you know, uh, totally bullshit. Um, so th this is exactly the opposite of what should be said because crypto is the only weapon we have in our hand. Um, yeah, that's a dangerous, no, no. Well, so I wouldn't disagree completely with because... But they, they mostly circumvent it. Yes. They mostly circumvent it, which is not... The result is that... Yeah. Even if you are using crypto, it might not save you, it might not help, if it's not used right. Yeah, that, that is totally true. But I mean, the, the, the point is maybe that what I urged them to do in the last days was, I told them, hey, you totally oversaw in how many areas this has impacts, like uh, where this I mean, we, we saw that NIST uh, revoked a certification that they made. We saw that RSA started to warn from their own products, which is a very good step. I mean, I've not seen that in the IT security before, because normally it was car companies who said, oh, by the way, sorry, we need to revoke the car and repair something and give it back to you. I've not seen so many IT security companies warning from their own products and say, we need to please stop using the product. And not, not there's a small software update. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I mean, we also thought that maybe we had some stuff that is secure and need to reconfigure some of it. But, and I mean, the, the previous lecture about the the level of sophisticatedness built in electronic weapons is also, of course, giving an idea on what would be necessary to protect from that kind of stuff. So, so you said another thing. Yeah. You said that the NSA was using, and they, they were doing these things that we learned about in, yeah. in the last time. Uh, any good strategy uh, will think about the opponents next? Forecast. Yes, or possible next steps. Do you think that, um, like, what they hear about the inside, but they're not focusing on keeping this stuff together? I mean, I mean, what we have seen in the just the last week um, is that the NSA has been sending a letter to every of their employees' family. Uh, that they shouldn't worry about the reputation uh, of the working of their family members for the NSA, that they're doing good for the society and so on. So which means they are totally already in panic mode. They are contacting the government more than actually. Yeah. Uh, excuse me, the German? Well, people do not take jobs with German uh, 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 companies to provide yeah. Infrastructure for the Bundestag. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, this, this. I mean, and and their fear is obviously that they are more and more in the hands of a young generation which doesn't like the the stuff, but they are dependent from them. And so, I mean, this this funny idea that Keith Alexander mentioned in public that saying, "Oh, we have identified the security risk in our infrastructure. It is the system administrators." We will reduce the amount of system administrators from 2,000 to about 150. So, meaning we will fire 1,800 people, and WikiLeaks tweeted like hours later and bring your hard disk with you. I mean, <laughs> so, so obviously panic in a not understanding the implications of how this thing is, is running. It's uh, great fun. Um, just that it's fucking dangerous, uh, but so next to that. Um, that's one course of action. What, what options do they have? Well, they can now um, apply better surveillance to the surveillance of the surveillance, um, which brings us to the paranoia of the fourth level, so who controls the control of the control of the controller and so on. And uh, I don't know, maybe they can try to centralize system administration with Perl scripts uh, which um, like amplifies the, the options for attacks also. Um, so I'm not sure they can do a lot of things. Of course they can make us afraid. I mean for them it's in a way very important to have Snowden hanged at the highest tree to, but they already know um, it's going to be difficult. So well, the Russians seem to be at least for the moment okay with that. And um, there's obviously maybe already the next two Snowdens preparing to have their role in the history book. Um, but it's our role to, you know, keep the, I mean, we already see that they're trying to keep control over the media. I mean, we have seen incredible things, just to recall it. I mean, we've seen the European airspace close down because of the presidential plane of the guy from Venezuela, uh, which was, if we would have forecasted that, be it at the Congress at... Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, if we would have forecasted such an action in any of our talks or interviews or whatever, they have, would have called us, come on, don't smoke so much pot and, you know, calm down with your paranoia and, you know, sorry, I have to cut out of this from the interview because this is like too much of your fantasy. So, I mean, we have seen things like that, that we couldn't have imagined to, to happen. Um, so what else? Can, so what, what is it that we cannot imagine now that will happen next? Yeah, many things. Many things. 
I mean, the, the, the fun thing from my point of view is already, even that it went very slow, they have already different uh, layers of problems. They have problems in the diplomatic world, watching what the uh, Brazilian presidential uh, situation is that the lady is like waiting for an apology uh, on her personal attacks. We have slowly even the European Union with the Belga come story seeing that this is not exactly what should be done under France and by the way it has nothing to do with fighting terrorism. Um, so they finally maybe also got the message or the memo or whatever. Um, so um, I'm seeing them in a way already um, running naked through the street, but again, this is dangerous. This is not only good, this is also a situation where you know, they might do symbolic things just to simulate that they are still being under, in control of the situation, um, which might end up in casualties, um, which is not fun and we have to avoid it. But, so that's why, in, in theory, we could also, you know, try to back-channel with them and tell them, you know, it's not our idea to dissolve all governments, just we want a fair deal, okay? Maybe like that. Um, but that's something for the, for the alcoholic drinks that will be served soon, hopefully. Um. Um, so is the CIA this? Yeah, I mean, if if we look at if we look at what's still missing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Welcome. Absolutely, but well, the, the point is this: that I was thinking what we could, in theory, do just to just a bit of theory about this. We could collect, Steph. We could collect money. Let's say we collect money and we get one million euro together plus. Uh, uh, a passport for a country that is uh, able and willing to take the burden and we like propose this uh, like a contest so if you are the CIA whistleblower he has one million euro your passport your safe passage <laughs> just <laughs> yeah well yeah, 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 but, but you, but if you read as much documents, you get And you could do that in many other currencies and countries as well. So that would be, I guess, a bit more interesting than usual lottery. And, uh, <laughs> and I mean... <laughs> exactly, so we could, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we need more ideas like that, that's good. It's going in the right direction, exactly. So, and of course, I mean, um, it, it, I think it's uh, symbolic-wise, it's totally important also that we ensure that Snowden, and also, by the way, Bradley Manning, even if it's not Chelsea Manning, I think it's very important that we ensure that these guys, even if they are catch and are in prison, have a good life. So I think it's very important that we donate each year because that guy will be locked in for 30 years, and I'm sure that he will at least it would be good that he can buy any book he wants, he could buy any food he wants, he can, you know, um, whatever is able to do with money. Um, that's at least something. So it's, it's symbolic-wise, it's important that we support even those who get catched. Um, and that's what, by the way, each of us can do, even if he's maybe not willing to step over a specific line because you have children or you have a family or you have obligations or you just as scared to mess up with the government, so, which is okay. I mean, everybody needs to have his personal way to what he can do and not do, but supporting those, I think, is a minimum thingy. So. Another thought that I had is, is you mentioned that communication is our strength. Um, At least communication infrastructure, I heard so. Well, we are suspected to be capable of running and constructing communication infrastructure. Um, anybody involved here with this internet thingy? Uh, this. <laughs> okay, what, what did you want to say? Uh, so, specifically, in, in, if, at some point it becomes important that communication is secure. Oh yeah. So if, 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 if,
So. <laughs> yeah, totally right. And by the way, let me uh, kill this other typo. Okay. So, just for the record, it's surveillance, and because of that, we need secure communication. Absolutely. So, of course, I mean, we need Tor. We need like more than one uh, XMPP server where the whole uh, world is now subscribed to, um, or at least part of it. Um, we need more countries' willingness. I mean, with the European Union, it's maybe difficult to to hide people because first we need to, need to get rid of Great Britain and the United. Uh, I mean, in the European Union to move on with privacy and so on. But um, now that's a delicate discussion. But. But um, so, and if anybody of you by accident has the idea to create a state, I'm, I'm there for it. So, yeah, it's a long term run. But maybe we can arrange with some governments and some nation states who are, I mean, Ecuador now announces they want to create the whole economy based on, on commons criteria, meaning on like not intellectual poverty, on creative commons uh, policies and things. So they want to try it out. and. And that's at least. Um, what other countries are uh, about to be in a position where they might be interested in trying new things? That's not, well, they are already in that position. Yeah. I mean, the, the point is that they're. We could even, you know, the German way handling environmental changes or climate change <coughs> or global warming or whatever your favorite term for it is, has been to uh, saying that uh, protect, uh, I mean, creating products which uh, energy efficiency with uh, uh, isolated heating and blah, 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 uh, have been uh, like uh, pushed to be like an export uh, product. So the whole economy actually, or part of German economy has been having great advantages from these effects by exporting stuff. So in theory, Europe could make a difference because what I'm seeing is, what I didn't put here in the slides, is the, the journalists currently, they sit on some stuff they are really too scared to publish, and that is because there is a lot more on corporations with um, companies who build in vectors, be it software, be it hardware. And um, The Guardian, for example, is now an American publication. They open an office there and so on, and so they enjoy the First Amendment of freedom of speech, but they also fucking fear the civil rights claims that might come, because if you have material from the NSA saying in the product this and that and that and that pro pro um, backdoor, and you go to the company and ask them to confirm it, they will not exactly confirm it. If you go to the NSA and ask them to confirm it, they will also not do it. And if you print it, and there's a comma mistake in there, or some you know values uh, not exact or whatever, then you're in deep shit. So they're totally afraid of exposing uh, some of the material to the public, which means that media failed already. But yeah, yeah, there will be a time. So. <coughs> Well, so yeah, no, I mean, yeah, I mean, media used to be, don't forget it, media used to be governmental controlled entities, government regulated at least entities, licensed entities in many places. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But what about the presentation of uh, before publication, actually doing research? I heard that journalists are supposed to do that sometimes. Yeah. You're right. That yeah. Journalists or writers are not capable of doing yeah. in-depth technical analysis. But that's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, so maybe they need help with that. Yes, they definitely need help with that. But in order to like, uh, well, that's a complicated process. I cannot, I apologize to not, um, I don't want to discuss this in public because this is actually my daily work to try to 
redefine the process with them, but it's a difficult thing. So because you have interests of the media organizations and you have stupid principles like the Guardian reports something and from that moment on it's no more news for the others. And some of the others don't want to report, like no British newspapers is talking about Snowden revelations because they would quote, have to quote the Guardian and the Guardian is fucking competition. So that's totally stupid, but it means that in Britain this whole story is, except for readers of the Guardian, not existed. Um, so, and there's more of these principles in. Just publish the material on the internet. Yes, you're right. Oh, you didn't say it. Sorry. <laughs> to, to publish, you know, yeah. Publishers who are pretty eager to reuse. I know. Yeah. But for that, you know, those. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and then the point is that you have their journalists who also, I mean, they make their money with it, and they are totally. But I mean, until the moment that the chief editor of the Guardian had to go to the basement of his office building and smash some hard disk, those guys. I mean, that was the moment they realized they couldn't do it alone. Okay, it's totally absurd already. I mean. <laughs> Maybe need help from the public or from others. I mean, but I mean, I guess it's not. Um, that's another picture, by the way. I mean, that's kind of another picture of the year, which makes very uh, clear that there is no. The emperor doesn't wear any clothes anymore, and it's no more about talking about democratic processes. This is the intelligence versus the people. That's it. So. <laughs>